Ah, remember the good old days of prototyping inside of Figma. So deep in love, oh yeah, with a wonderful girl. Uh, no, actually, I don't remember a time of the good old days where I loved prototyping inside of Figma. It's always been a necessary evil, something we as designers have to do to correctly communicate to developers and clients and stakeholders. And sure, it's gotten better over the years. Now that we have state-based prototyping and we have variables, we no longer have a million different noodles working inside of our design files. But the problem is it's still time intensive. It's tedious, it's hard to maintain. And at the end of the day, it's still just pixels. So I say that prototyping inside of Figma is absolutely dead. It's gone, it's not coming back, and hallelujah that it's not coming back. The new skill that you have to have in your toolbox is this. At Config 2025, Figma announced a new suite of tools, marketing tools, website design tools, but they also announced Figma Make. And Figma Make is an AI-driven prompt app tool that turns text descriptions or existing Figma files into functional interactive prototypes and web apps. It also allows users to describe ideas and upload design files or provide specific instructions to an AI model, which then generates the corresponding code and an interactive preview. Now there's lots of these vibe coding agentic tools out there on the market. So what makes Figma make so different? Figma make enables designers and product teams to quickly explore ideas, iterate on designs and bridge the gap between design concepts and playable prototypes even without deep coding knowledge or extensive amount of prototyping. And while I'm not completely sold that agentic AI and vibe coding tools are the future of development, I do think that it's the future of prototyping. So let's take a look at Figma Make and how I'm starting to implement it into my prototyping workflow. I wanna pause for a moment and say thank you to the sponsor of this video, and that's Mobbin.com. Mobbin is the one-stop shop, best place on the internet to go to find the inspirations and solutions for the problems that you and me you're trying to solve each and every day as web and digital product designers. Mobbin members get access to applications and sites so you can be inspired and solve those problems. I especially love their search capabilities. I can jump over and find things that are trending, category screens, specific UI elements, and even entire flows. If I'm trying to solve a editing profile flow or an onboarding flow, there's 749 examples of the experts who have already solved that problem. We're talking about the best in the industry like Headspace and Grab and Adobe and on and on you go. You can download all of these, bring them into your Figma projects and use them as inspiration. Spend less hours toiling to figure it out yourself and trust the experts that have been solving these problems for years let it inspire you and let it save you tons of time. Subscribers of this channel get a special deal, 20% off an annual plan. You can find that link down in the description. Thank you to Mobbin for powering the design community and inspiring us all. Here's a common example of a design file that a product designer like you or myself might find ourselves in. Lots of design, lots of things happening. You can see in this file that we have multiple different work streams, pages, or flows happening. Onboarding screens, dashboard screens, recording screens. We have setting screens, integration screens. There is a lot of design work that's happening here. And whether you prototype directly inside of each flow or create some sort of master prototype, doesn't really matter what your workflow is, the experience will be the same. I leave my design flow and I head over to prototype and I experience tons of noodles. Now, like I've said, you can minimize this by using variables and state-based prototyping, but again, all of that is tedious and takes a lot of time. So there's no escaping the tediousness of prototyping. I don't wanna do it anymore. I have a new project that I'm working on. I'd like to prototype quicker, get this concept into action, get proof of concept and approval from my client as soon as possible. Here is my new design file. It's kind of a web app experience, a dashboard where you have a left-hand sidebar, you have some rows here. And when the user clicks on one of these rows, it just opens up a side peak or a modal here. That's all I want. I wanna prototype this interaction without having to stitch together lots of extra screens, create variables. Let's go ahead and do that. It's really, really simple. I'm just gonna open up a new file here and I'm gonna select a Figma make 
file. Now, when I create that Figma make file, it's going to open it up. It's stored inside of Figma. I can organize it inside of my project. I can always come back to it and add more flows, more functionality to it without having to stitch together all of these different screens. I can now start to design concept and prototype on the fly. Immediately, it asks me what I want to make. And this is no different than a lot of the other agentic AI tools that are out there on the market. But what is different is that everything is inside the Figma ecosystem. That means that I can come back over to my project here. I can grab multiple different artboards. So I'm going to grab, for instance, this artboard, copy it, come back, paste it in. I'm going to come back over here and grab my modal version artboard and I'm going to come back and I'm going to paste that in. Now I have two different artboards with different states happening there and I can tell Figma make what to do through a simple prompt. Let's add our prompt in and it says create a dashboard interface when a user clicks on a row in the table, open a side peak modal similar to Notion or Asana. And notice there's some other options here. I can add more attachments. I can select a library if I've published a design library, which I have not yet for this project, but I have for other projects. And I can also tweak the settings. I can edit guidelines, edit styles. But with my design set and my prompt, I feel pretty good about moving forward and seeing what Figma make can actually make for me. Why don't we hit go and watch Figma make do its business. It's going to take a little while. And just like other agentic tools, we have our prompting space down the left hand side. We have the preview that's going to show up here and we have the code base that's starting to be built out and I can toggle back and forth between the two. Now, there's also a bunch of settings here. If I open up those settings, I can hook up a domain to this. I can do super base integrations and there's more integrations that are on the way that will help us to do actual authentication, login, data database functionality, all of that good stuff. But for now, all we're trying to do is get our prototype working and functional. Figma Make has generated my prototype and it looks pretty stinking good. It is probably about 98% spot on to my Figma file. And Figma has the privilege to do that because it's pulling the file directly from my design and applying it here. I went in and made a few changes, add a couple of other prompts here, updating the sidebar, updating the viewport height or width. And I was able to do that really, really easily by simply addressing any area that was concerning to me. I can hit point and edit and I could start to drill down on any of these spots. If I now, if I needed to give more functionality to a certain spot or change the balance or the style of things, I could. You'll notice there's some small changes here like certain buttons or call to actions aren't balanced, but we immediately out of the box got functionality for our accordions and we're able to actually hover over and see that experience for the rows. Now that in and of itself is already multi-state prototyping. A simple state for hover uh, would actually require me to spend some time prototyping, maintain and update it. And again, don't want to do that. So I spent a little bit of time prompting a little bit more, fixing a few things. And what we got is a prototype that functions and works. I can click on any one of these. I actually added draggable capabilities here to my side peak so I can drag this out. I can actually uh, added keystroke commands here so I can go up and down on my keyboard. You can see the active content being changed or navigated in the background. That's super nice. I can also scroll up and down and I added this uh, anchor link style navigation that I can click on and scroll the user to that content very, very easily. Now, if that wasn't enough, I also was able to take this a step further with just a couple more prompts. I was able to tell Figma make to add a new row, create new content when the user clicks on our main call to action button. They click on it. You'll see the new row has been created and we can again navigate up and down between those new rows and we can continue to store some temporary data here. And if I wanted to extend this, I'd make that super base integration where it actually stores information allows me to update it, do some CRUD operations. And then I took it a next step further by adding functionality to my persistent floating action button down here. I click daily plan. It opens up this task list that has been created. Now, this does not look exactly like the design, but that doesn't matter. I'm starting to create functionality here and actually share it with my client. But what's great is I told it in this instance, I just wanted to open up a modal where there is basically a task manager. I can add new tasks here and drop them inside and it's temporarily storing that data. I can actually mark these off and we get functionality out of the box. 
how long would that have taken me if I was doing all the design work and the prototyping work, the client didn't like it, I had to come back and reprototype things. Ugh, it's an absolute nightmare, but Figma Make has helped me to create something quickly that I can now show to my clients, stakeholders, or developers. Now, if that wasn't enough, there's more benefit of using Figma Make as your prototyping tool than traditional screen-to-screen -screen noodle prototyping, and it comes with the experience that your stakeholders, devs, or clients get from the actual concept or prototype itself. From Figma Make, I can simply publish this design or this prototype, and I can give them a staging link. That opens up in the browser where the concept or the prototype should be viewed in context of how the endpoint user will actually use this. So no more invites to Figma prototypes where we have to explain to them how to use something or click through the different flows in the sidebar. Now they simply get access to the prototype and they can use it in the browser, experience it the way that it should be experienced. This this is so much better. And if that wasn't enough, now we even have a leg up or a head start for our developers. We can come back over to Figma Make and go over to the code view and see the amount of work in the code base that has been created for our developers. So they can click into the app TSX, they can go into styles, they can see the different UI components that have been built and all the different React that's being imported. They get an idea of how to form their variables, their code base, the initial starts to the actual project. This is so much better for all the reasons that I've mentioned. And now let me tell you how I'm using this and why I do this. How am I using Figma Make in my day-to-day -day design work and how should you use it? I highly recommend that you use Figma Make for digital product design prototypes. That means mobile applications and web applications. When it comes to building websites, there are way better solutions out there. And don't even get me started on Figma sites because I'm not a fan. If I'm building a website, I'm going directly from my design tool straight into Framer. It is, in my opinion, the best web design tool and web development tool on the market because it gets you into that published state fast without some sort of middleman. I don't need an interactive prototype for my websites. What I need is the actual website. But when it comes to prototyping web and mobile apps, Figma Make is your guy. And lastly, let's talk about the greater benefits of using Figma Make. Number one, it's gonna save you tons of time because prototyping in that old screen-to-screen -screen noodling way is a waste of your time and my time. I would much rather take my design, add a simple text-based prompt and get immediate interactivity and functionality. And that is hands down a better experience. Number two, it's more impressive to my clients, stakeholders, and developers. It's a better level of communication to devs. It's more impressive and a better experience altogether for non-technical people that don't wanna be invited into a Figma prototype, but instead wanna experience your web or mobile app in the context in which it's built. They can see it in the browser, they can feel it, it feels real, it feels alive, because it kind of is real, it kind of is alive. Number three, it's just easier to maintain. Gone are the days of a million noodles, constantly changing and tweaking, timing and easing. Instead, I can bring everything into Figma Make and it becomes my fourth kind of benefit, which is a single source of truth now for the design and specifically for functionality and interactivity. I would much rather maintain a singular project, which you absolutely can, because when I come back into my project, there it is. It is a file that I can always go back into and I can always preview and I can always reprompt to my liking to get it exactly how I need it to be. Single source of truth, easier to maintain, text-based prompts all the way for prototyping. There's a ton of other benefits to using Figma Make for prototyping, but those are hot takes for me. I wanna hear what you have to say. Do you like Figma Make? Are you interested in using it as your primary prototyping tool? Or do you think there's more value in screen-to-screen -screen noodle prototyping like we've been doing for years? Let me know. I'd love to hear your opinions down in the comments. And if you've enjoyed this video, make sure to leave a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel, ring the bell, so you know when more content that has to do with design, prototyping, agentic AI tools comes out. I hope you're having an amazing week, designing amazing things, making amazing things. We'll see you in the next one, design champs.